who worked for this guy. I was had on. He was cutting money. And he was hurrying because it was Friday afternoon. He had to finish. See, he had to finish before sundown, right? Because, you know, that's when the Sabbath began. So anyway, going back to our story. The sun is going down. The Sabbath, our Sabbath is beginning. This is Sunday Mass. Now, the other reason I mention that is because if you've been listening carefully uh, through these last uh, weeks, you know that uh, in the Sundays of Ordinary Time, we're getting towards the end, uh, the last Sunday of Ordinary Time is the Solemnity of Christ the King, actually, right before Advent. Huh? But in, in this year's uh, version of the Scriptures, we've been hearing from the Gospel of Luke, right? And, uh, you know, our God is a wonderful God, and, you know, our God is uh, multi-dimensional. So we get four different angles on Jesus, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And uh, so throughout this year, we've been hearing from the Gospel of Luke. And many people have characterized the Gospel of Luke as the Gospel of God's loving mercy. Because in the Gospel of Luke, you have this story, which I'm going to talk a little more about. You also have the story of the Good Samaritan. Yeah, remember that one? You have the story of the prodigal son in Luke's Gospel. So these stories, uh, Luke remembered these stories specifically because Luke was very concerned with uh, communicating Jesus as the person who epitomized God's loving mercy. So that's why he told those stories, remembering what Jesus had done and said, because he wanted to make sure people got that message about God's loving mercy. And of course, um, you know, thank God, uh, in recent years, we have St. Faustina and her vision of uh, Jesus, the divine mercy, huh? God, and, and this was a further emphasis in our Holy Father, Pope Francis, uh, declared that year of mercy, you remember? And then there was the door of mercy, remember? Mercy doors. So um, all of this is to emphasize to us that God desires nothing more than to be merciful to us. God desires nothing more than to have us experience conversion. And in the story of Zacchaeus in the Gospel, we see this desire to seek and save the lost. You see, this is what this is how God operates. This is God's operating system. Okay, using the computer model, right? You know, it's the operating system. The operating system in the computer. In, I don't know what computer, but I know what the end. The operating system, iOS or whatever. You know, the operating system organizes all of the stuff, right? It's very important. The operating system, and the operating system has a default uh, mechanism. So you know when you turn on a computer, there's a song and dance that goes on with your computer when you turn it on, if you know that. I don't know if you know that or not, but that's, that's why, you know, normally, uh, when in doubt, reboot, right? <laughs> Everybody says, reboot, right? Did you, you, you call, call a bomba, they ask you, did you reboot? You know, because, you know, sometimes that works. Because what does that do? It reinitiates the operating system, and if the operating system goes through the song and dance it's supposed to go through, by default it does this, okay? So by default, God's operating system is to show mercy. Why do you think he said Jesus? Because God knew we needed mercy, right? <laughs> we needed big time, right? That's why he said Jesus. That's the operating system, but here's the problem. You clicked on the attachment. <laughs> you know how this works, right? You know, you, you, this is what, you know, we have, a, you know, I, I, I'm in the diocese in you know, rcchawaii.org, right? And, you know, we have our IT guy, one of the things he told us is, we gotta take, you gotta take this course now, cybersecurity. It's, a, it's an online course. And you have to take it every so often. And you have to pass the course. And part of the passing the course is they have these little scenarios and you're supposed to respond with what's the best thing to do, right? And the worst thing to do is click on the attachment. Right. If you don't know who's sending it to you. In fact, if it looks kind of unusual, what's the solution? 
call that person and find out if they sent it to you. Right? Because somebody tries to send stuff to us, and using the person's name, like Bishop Larry has this happen all the time. People send stuff, Bishop Larry's name, like, oh, Bishop Larry, that must be important. I better click on that attachment. Woo! You better not, because if you actually, if you look at where the address is, you, if you hit touch Bishop Larry's name there, you find out that's not his email address. That's right. That attachment has a virus. And you know what the virus does? It disables the operating system. Right? So that's the point. You see, God wants nothing more than to save us. God wants, wants nothing more than to grant us salvation and mercy. But, you know, ever since Adam and Eve, we've been clicking on the attachment. <laughs> right? It was all set up perfectly in the garden, right? What did they do? They clicked on the attachment. Hello? You know? <laughs> and so ever since then, you know, this has been our struggle, you know, not to click on the attachment. Because the attachment invites in the virus. And then, not only do you get infected, but you know, sin is contagious, you get it from other people, you know that, of course, yeah, it's like COVID, right? <laughs> how did you get COVID? Somebody else had COVID. How, how, did you, how did you end up? The point is, don't click on that attachment. <laughs> but the point is, God wants us, more than anything, to experience God's mercy. But, we should not click on the attachment, for one. And number two, there are three important things we need to do, the very same things that Zacchaeus was willing to do, in order to access the riches of God's grace and mercy. See, it's all about access, right? You have all this information in the computer, but how do you access it, right? Do you know how to access the information? How, do you know how to access God's mercy? Well, if you listen to the story of Zacchaeus, you will know that there are three important things that you and I need to do to access God's mercy. Because God wants to give us this mercy, but we have to do something. We have to access it. We have to want it. We have to receive it. And what, what did Zacchaeus do? First of all, Zacchaeus was willing to look foolish in order to see Jesus. You see, what happened to Zacchaeus at first is exactly what happens in the world today. The crowd was not letting Zacchaeus see Jesus. Whether consciously or unconsciously, they were blocking him from seeing Jesus. He wanted to see Jesus, but he was short, you know, and the crowd was preventing him from seeing Jesus. So, welcome to our world. Yeah. Welcome to our world that tries to prevent us from seeing Jesus. Huh? Whether consciously or unconsciously, that's what's going on in the world today. But, this was happening, now, but Zacchaeus, what did Zacchaeus do? Oh, I can't see Jesus, too bad, so sad, he's passing by. I'll, I'll check him out next time, you know. Manana. <laughs> right? No, no. He was willing to look foolish in order to see Jesus. He ran ahead and climbed the tree. He's an adult guy. Uh, he was short, okay, but you know, he climbed the tree. You know, if you want to see Jesus, you're going to have to look foolish in the world's eyes. You're going to have to do foolish things by the world's standards. You know? You're going to have to believe that life begins at conception ends with natural death. You're going to have to believe that, you know, God made them male and female. And for this reason, man leaves his father and thinks of life to become one flesh. You're going to have to believe that, even though the world's going to tell you you're out of it, you're um, not progressive enough, not enlightened enough. Really? That's, that's the reality. And this, this happens every day to people who try to see Jesus as Jesus wants to be seen. You have, you have to be willing to look foolish because you will look foolish in the eyes of many people in the world. But God's wisdom is greater, right? Amen. God's wisdom is greater than human wisdom. So 
That's the first important thing Zacchaeus did. The crowd tried to perfect, uh, pressure him to conform. We must be willing to look crazy in the world's eyes in order to see the eyes of Jesus. We want to see the eyes of Jesus. God's wisdom is not a worldly wisdom. Point number two. Zacchaeus was willing to welcome Jesus to the place where he lived. That's an important part of the story. Jesus said, I'm coming to your house, Zacchaeus. And Jesus, Zacchaeus said, yeah, that's great. He was not ashamed to have Christ in his home, even though it was the house of a sinner. So the question is, are you and I willing to allow Christ to be with us in our sinful house? Are we keeping him out because of shame or fear? Are we willing to bring him to the situations where our life is really lived? Or are we willing only to meet Jesus at church? Yeah? It's great we're meeting Jesus here, okay? It's wonderful we meet Jesus in the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. That is wonderful and that's fine. But you know, Jesus wants to come to your house. He wants to be where you really live, you know? And you don't live in church every day, all day, okay? You live at your workplace, you live at school, you live with your friends, you live with your neighbors, you live with your in-laws, your outlaws, you know? <laughs> you live with those people. You know, as, as Mother Teresa said, that was Jesus in his most distressing disguise. <laughs> you know? And we've all met the distressing disguise of Jesus. But that's where Jesus wants to be. That's where he, that's where he lives in, in those people too. And he wants, to, he wants to come to our house, okay? Not just come to our church, to your house, my house. And we, if we want to experience the fullness of God's mercy, we need to let him in to our house, okay? Now, point number three. Zacchaeus was willing to clean up his mess. This is a very important part of the story. His conversion was completed when he was willing to repay those he had stolen from and give to those in need. Real repentance needs to be accompanied by reparation. We need to take responsibility for the mess and the aftermath that our sins and mistakes have caused. So, you know, it's not just about, you know, oh, God's mercy, oh, God loves me, everything's forgiven, now I can just continue on with my life. No, no, no. You know, this is why when you go to confession, it's called the penance. <laughs> That's why there's a penance. Because it's the part, it's part of the whole experience of mercy to make reparation. Obviously, you can't pay back God for His love, but the point is, you need to clean up, you and I need to clean up our mess. Now, you know, did you ever, did there, any of you watch The Chosen, you know, you, you got, you yes. The Chosen app, that's like, you watch The Chosen, you know. Yes. My most favorite character in The Chosen is Matthew. Yes. I love Matthew. Yes. Matthew likes Zacchaeus, he's short, did you notice he was short in the movie, yes. in The Chosen? He's short, likes Zacchaeus. And he's Jewish, like Zacchaeus, and he was a tax collector, like Zacchaeus, and like Zacchaeus, his countrymen, the Jews, hated him. That's why he was so nervous. Matthew's so nervous. He's so oh, I'm so nervous. I'm so worried. I love the one that it's not, he's perfectly portrayed because he's totally nervous, right? Why? Because he's extorted so many people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Because that's you know, how, how the Romans worked. So they, they were very smart, the Romans. They're going to collect taxes from the Jews. Let one of their countrymen collect the taxes because they're going to know where the kala is, yeah. how much those people really make. And then the Romans said, okay, here's how much you have to collect for us. And then you know what Zacchaeus and Matthew went and did? They collect more than that. They extorted the people to collect more. That's how they made their bucks, by extortion. So, you know, no wonder, you know, they, hate, they hated the tax collector. No wonder Matthew was nervous. No wonder Zacchaeus was nervous. 
But here, here what Zacchaeus said. He said, um, and if I've extorted anybody, <laughs> you know what I'm, I'm going to pay them back fourfold. And you know, this is not, when, when I, I my, my, my dad died two years ago, so um, my dad uh, retired from the newspaper, uh, old advertiser at HNA, uh, 1992, and um, worked for 40 years at the newspaper, okay? So he had a pension, you know, from the newspaper, like old style pension, right? Remember that before 401k, right? I get pension of 403b or whatever, I don't know what it is now. Anyway, a uh, pension. So when he died, the pension stopped. But I thought to myself, you know, my dad would not have let my mother be without something, you know, so I bet he designated her what they call a contingent anoint. See, when you may have a pension, you can designate somebody like your spouse you with contingent anoint. And what that means is if you die first, lots of guys die before the girls, right? And it's not always the top top yeah. Okay. So that's why in the Bible even, they're always concerned about widows, right? Because there are lots of them. Okay, but anyway, I knew my dad had designated this, but I couldn't find the paper. And you know what the pension people said? Oh, we can't find the paper either. Oh, oh you know, we don't know where the file is. That was a long time ago. Your, you know, your father designated that years ago, 20, 30 years ago. We don't have that file, even though we're administering the pension. We, but your dad died, so no more money. I knew there was a paper somewhere. Finally, a good friend, a lawyer friend, came to visit me. He said, Gary, we have to look at those files. So I looked in the garage, I found the file cabinet, I looked in the garage, and all of a sudden, Bing! There's the paper! It says, Contingent Anuit, Alice Secor. So I faxed that little puppy right away to the pension people. And I said, this is connected to the story. <laughs> I said, not only do you owe my mother a whole year's worth of pension that you didn't pay us, you owe interest. Because like my lawyer friend said, you know, they owe interest. They paid us back with interest. It wasn't fourfold, okay, but <laughs> it was significant, okay? So my point is, this Zacchaeus, he cleaned up his mess. He not only paid those people back, he paid them back fourfold. And that tells you that, you know, he really experienced God's mercy and love, huh? Big yes. time. Yes. Right? And that's what God wants all of us to experience, huh? More deeply, God's mercy and love. We all need it, right? Right. Yes. We've all clicked on the attachment. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. But that's okay. You know, um, they used to say, I'm okay, you're okay. That was a psychological battle, but, you know, years ago, that was a thing, that was a transactional analysis, you know. I'm okay and you're okay. <laughs> no, I, you know what? I'm not okay. You're not okay. But that's okay, because God <laughs> loves us anyway. <laughs> right? Yeah. That's all that matters, right? Yes. That's what matters. That we experience God's love and mercy. Okay, all right, this is the end, my Portuguese. I don't want to <laughs> but we want to thank God for being so merciful to us. We want to thank God that that's how God loves us with great love and mercy. And we pray that we, like Zacchaeus, will do what we need to do to fully access God's grace. Amen. Amen.